Knowing who to turn to for help is a clear dilemma for people in Ballamurphy. Had the feud happened during the Troubles, it's likely that the IRA would have intervened. West Belfast MP Gerry Adams says people must recognise times have changed. Many Republicans hark back or look to the old days when the IRA would have been looked to to sort this out. And I was making the point that that is not possible, that this can only be sorted out by those who are involved in this unacceptable behaviour stopping this unacceptable behaviour. Within the Republican family, the feud has caused tension. The Notter Antonios are no strangers to criticising mainstream Republicans. Six years ago, they blamed the IRA for killing a relative linked to the real IRA. In this current climate, they again feel betrayed. We always support it in our own way, the stroll, you know, prisoners' collections and whatever. You know, but there's many ways. It's always like Adam says, no parts too small. And how do you view the IRA and Sinn Féin now? How do I view them? Waste of space. Why do you say that? Why? Well, you have Jerry Adams who goes to, what, Palestine? To try and sort of something out there and he couldn't sort out of his own doorstep. But Jerry Adams insists he has tried to solve the feud. He believes the solution rests with those who are causing the trouble. A group of people have set themselves outside the norms. The same thing's happening on a much larger scale in Limerick City and in parts of uh, Limerick. The same thing's happening in parts of uh, Dublin. Uh, and it is criminal, uh, it is feuding, and it needs to stop. Say hello. Charlotte Burns, who's part of the Notter Antonio family, says the IRA have labelled her family as being criminals and antisocial. She thinks they're using the feud as an excuse to get them out of the area. Literally what they're saying is using criminals to put criminals out. We're not criminals. They're trying to make us out criminals, but we're not criminals. We have literally been demonised, we've been tortured. They obviously see us some sort of threat. You know I mean, I think 30 years of struggle of how would you say, um, freedom of speech, we don't have it. Life behind doors in Ballamurphy is difficult. Isabel Lochran, Jared Devlin's aunt, says she has become a prisoner in her own home. Most of my day is just spent sitting here in the kitchen, looking out the window. Um, don't go out. I just sit here and smoke and drink coffee. Why don't you go out? I just don't go out. Is it fear? Um, I think part of it is fear and, um, just constant reminders of who's roaming the streets and uh, sort of get panic attacks when I do go out. When I get stressed out, I would take a day as a pan. Does that help? Well, it just sort of calms me down a wee bit. I'm not saying it helps. It doesn't take it away. Outside her house, Isabel has a constant reminder of her nephew. And if I feel that there's days that I can't cope with that, I would just take a sleeping tablet and go to bed, to try and blank it out. But again, it's reality when you wake up. He's not here. And he's not coming back. Five minutes walk away, it's mid-morning, and Josie, Victor, not Antonio's sister, has her own way of coping. Through drinking. It's straight up and half eight this morning, just sitting. Late night. It's her. How does that help? It doesn't help them, and it helps me to live with it. It helps me just to get out and go to bed. I go to bed. Sleep. And I couldn't care less if the pet and burnt me, because I'm a deep sleeper. 
If you didn't have a drink every day, what would you be like? I don't know. I don't think it gets a bad. She wouldn't be a cop. She'd be a nervous wreck. We didn't deserve what we were going through. We didn't murder no one. We never murdered your devil and we weren't there when it happened. And we're getting crucified for it. It's nine months since Jared Devlin died. Since then, this community has torn itself apart. And what's left is a real fear and a sense of foreboding that the violence is far from over. It's dreadful uh, to think that there was a man murdered in the street, that lives were turned upside down, that people have been burnt out of their homes. Um, when will it end? When those that are controlling this situation, who act like active service units in this area, decide to stop it, that's when it will stop. Now there's a monster uh, created in Bally Murphy. Who next? Who's going to be next? We will be happy, and I really do hope we will be happy one day when we move. But the monster's here. There's too much evil and too much bad. It ain't gone. You're just waiting on hearing who else has been injured or what has happened. I don't know, I just can't explain it. It's just a big, it's, it's like a nightmare, but you know it's not. Because you're facing the same thing the next day. The two families insist they're not involved in a feud and they will not leave the area. Not for the first time, it seems. Peace on the streets of Bala Murphy is a long way off. When the war was going on here, people always thought it was late at the end of the tunnel. Now people are just asking, is this as good as it gets?